today we got a fun video today we're off to the dealership we're on our way to the Ford dealership up here because we're gonna go check out a brand new fighter jet gray Mach 1 yes I have not seen one in person there's been plenty of videos like my good buddy Stang Mode dude has one he's given it away on his channel you know it's pretty much the same spec uh, this one doesn't have the handling package either, I don't think. I don't know if we'll get to drive it or not, but today's going to be a fun video. Figured that I would take you along for the ride, give you my impressions, because I've never seen one of these new 2021 Mach 1s in person, only on pictures. And when I saw it on pictures, I was... I kind of had a love-hate relationship with it, you know, no, no shaker hood, you know, it's it's this, it's that, it's got the better GT350 transmission and suspension, it's basically built on the foundation of a GT350, but with the Gen 3 Coyote engine, which is awesome. So, we're going to go up the here to the dealership, right up the road, take you on a journey, see what I think about this car, and let's have some fun, let's go. Alright, we're here. One of the best Ford dealerships that I've ever worked with. Jenkins and Wynn Ford in Clarksville, Tennessee. Come check them out and hit up your boys, Sean Allen or Floyd. Those are the go-to guys. Highly recommend. They don't really push you in any direction. They're very helpful, very, very educated in what they do, but um, all right, yeah, let's take a peek around before we go inside. I think they got a Mach 1 around here somewhere. I, I saw one the other day on a truck. I'd like to find it. Uh, it might be inside, but um, let's check it out. Let's see what we got. I think they got some Broncos up here, too. Look, there's one right there. There's a Bronco. I like it, man. That's a sport, so that's not the big one because they're not out yet, but... I really enjoy that. Let me get a turn. Let me get turned around. Look at that. That thing is sharp. I really, I'm really digging that, man. Look at that. The Ford Bronco. I should have bought that instead of uh, this 2020 Escape from a wife. That thing is super sexy. I like it. Yeah, we're gonna head inside. I don't see the Mach 1 out here. Oh, maybe it's over here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Real quick because I know people are gonna ask, what's up with my Mustang? Well, it's gonna be coming back here soon. We hope at the end of the month, and the build is changing a little bit, the engine spec that we went with, you know, things that we talked about, and let me tell you that it's extreme. It's very hardcore, built by RPG racing engines. Guys, my interaction with them, the relationship that I've built over just, you know, texting back and forth with Will, the builder, the engine builder, and the crew there has been second to none. I'm so excited to get this new engine into my car and I think it's going to really, really, yeah, I, I can't give you any details. You're gonna have to stay tuned, subscribe to the channel because it's gonna blow your mind what we've done. It's something super special, big, and it's going to be extremely powerful, a new era, a new, start fresh start with the car with the build it's crazy i'm so excited but all right i'm gonna shut up and we're gonna go inside check out this all new 2021 mach 1 in the fighter jet gray let's go you gotta love this new age that we're living in look <laughs> at all that that's so stupid 350 has some accolades yeah yeah look at that front it's, end and then this thing you is got a 5 -0 right here you can yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, regular GT. They did slap a thousand bucks. Mach one. Of course they did. Yep. <laughs> so, all right, he's gonna he's gonna talk to me in a minute, and Mr. Sean Allen here. So this is who you're gonna see. But we're gonna take a uh, walk around of the all new Mach one, and I can tell you this thing is absolutely gorgeous, man. I love this color. This color. So I'm gonna wrap my car to this color. Fighter jet gray. Fighter jet gray. So basically built around the GT350 uh, foundation, more or less, you know, heavy duty suspension. This one actually has the uh, PP2 wheels and tires here. Looks like Michelin Pilot 4S tires, but it's a Gen 3 Coyote. Open air box filter like you'd find on a GT350. And look at these little 
creature comforts here like you'd find on a Shelby. So really cool. If uh, you didn't know the difference, you might not think that you were looking at a 5.0. You might think it was a 5.2, but let's take a look around. It's got the little, and this is not the uh, handling package. So this is like a satin, well, it's got some flake in there too. So something I might change is a bigger wing, but um, yeah, I love these wheels. They look good. I like the color and with the orange, it looks sharp. Something newer for the uh, the new Mustang starting in like 2020. A little shark fin antenna there, something a little different. Mach 1 badging. This thing is really sharp. You have better tips from the factory. All the GT guys, so I'll show you in comparison. So look at these, how good they look. Double walled, big, fat. And then we're gonna come over here to a GT and look at this sad story over here as far as exhaust. So five liter Coyote Gen 3. And this is what you get from the factory. So, yeah, not very aesthetically pleasing, but they stepped it up quite a bit with the Mach 1. The front end is really sharp. In the pictures that I saw when they released it on the internet, I didn't know if I really liked it, honestly. Wasn't sure I'd fall in love with it, but kind of cool, like the old Boss. You have the Fox headlights there, which look actually pretty sharp on this. GT350 styling-ish to the front bumper. But this is really, really good looking. So we'll get to the price in a second. I wanna see the interior. This is a real treat. I'm gonna try not to rub my greasy hands all over it, but so, got the regular seats, not the Recaros. This is a nice touch here, just a little stuff. Nothing, it's not on the back, but doors, pretty much GT Premium. And this one is a 10R80. So it doesn't have the all new, well not new, but the reused six speed manual from the GT350. But cool that you can actually get this with the 10 speeds. Let's close the door, make it a little bit more homey in here. This feels like my car, honestly. It feels just like my car. 10R80, digital cluster, but you got a little bit of different stitching on the seats. The uh, new console here, the dash, is that uh, new brushed aluminum look, which I like better. I'm, I'm a big fan. This one has the B&O audio system just like my car does. So. It, I mean, really sitting in here, it feels just like my car. In a GT350, it used to be a lot more cut down, right? But for 2019, I believe, and up, it may have been 2020, but I think it's 2019, you had the options to go with the b &O audio system. They give you some more creature comforts inside of the car to make it more luxurious, but you did not get the digital cluster. You know, you can always upgrade that after the fact, you know, aftermarket uh, with an OEM unit, but you know, pretty cool that we basically kind of have a GT350 competitor almost, but with a little bit more creature comfort. So this, if I were Shelby shopping, honestly, this, this, uh, oof, I don't know. Yeah, because the price difference between the two, a GT350 and this is less than you might think. It's less spread. So I would have a hard time, but let me know in the comments, what do you think? What would you buy just after watching this and what you know on the internet and your research? Would you opt for a GT350 or would you buy one of these? Again, you can get it with the 10 speed automatic 10R80 or you can get the same transmission out of that GT350 in this, but with the 5.0 Gen 3 direct and port injected Coyote that's been proven. You can throw a supercharger on here twin turbo, pro charger, whatever you want, and the engine will take it. With the GT350s, from my experience, they're a little bit more prone to crankcase pressures and stuff like that. They, you remember the crank itself is different. So I don't know, you know, and a GT500 is, you know, leaps and bounds in price and, and features above this. But 
if I had a Shelby 350 beside me, I know I'm talking a lot, but if I had a Shelby 350 beside me, I, I might have to venture and buy the Mach 1. And uh, I thought that I hated the car, all the pictures and stuff like that when I've seen it on the internet. But now just looking around at the car, I mean, this might have to be my favorite. But again, let me know in the comments, what would your choice be? So we're gonna step back outside and take another look around because we gotta suck this up, right? It's our first time seeing it. I, wanna, I don't wanna miss an angle on this car. I wanna bring this all to you. So again, I appreciate everybody watching. If you made it this far in the video, subscribe, hit the thumbs up button. I appreciate it very much. So let's continue walking around and exploring. Let's go. This one's got the memory seating too. Of course it does. Let's look at the price real quick. So let's keep our fingerprints off of it. Such a beautiful car. Let's check out the price. So right there, that's what I was talking about, $60,000. And that's in the ballpark of a, you know, a, a new GT350. Well, they don't make them anymore because this is replacing it. But if you could find one a lot, it might be a similar price. Or you might be shopping for uh, one that's a, a year or two old. You know, so this is ballpark what you might be spending. So again, let me know in the comments. I mean, check this out. $60,000 is what you're paying for a brand new Walk 1. They don't make 350s anymore. This is basically replacing it. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because I thought that these were going to be like a parts bin car, and it kind of is, in a sense. But I think it's done the correct way. And uh, I kind of hated the car in the beginning, like I was talking about. But after seeing it in person, I, I was wrong. I admit that I was completely wrong. This thing is beautiful, and I would own this in a heartbeat. This does not, again, have... Look at this. Okay, this is different. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I want to take you along for the ride. This is gloss black. Look how this looks. This has metallic, it's like a, a satin black with metallic in it. Really sharp. I did not know that. And you can see the differences here. So gloss, and then you have that different color. These are gloss. Really cool. And same gloss on the bottom. The uh splitter down here is really aggressive sticks out pretty far i like that but the fangs here are very gt350 reminiscent i like it but i like the badging man that looks good let me back up get a good front profile pick like that yes yes this is calling my name <laughs> this is sharp the other thing I don't like about the Gen 3 Coyotes is it looks like a rat's nest under here with all the uh, the lines and vacuum and this, that, and the other. The GT350 is a definitely, it's definitely a prettier engine, but it is what it is. Or Gen 2 Coyote even is a lot more like pleasing to look at than this, but it is what it is. So this has the PP2 wheels. I like the brakes. They look really good. And uh, check that out. So right back in there, you got a lot of venting. This is, you know, engineered a little bit more for the track than like a performance pack is. So this looks good, man. Knock one here. I like this thing. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? If a GT350 were sitting here side by side with this, what do you think? I'd, I'd probably jump on this. This I, is why you got. I'm, I agree. You I, got eight grand in options here. Yeah. So you could be in a little bit more base Mach one and be closer to probably fifty three, fifty four. Right. You know, so you're still in a performance package car. Yeah. So the level one, level two no longer exists. It's actually a performance package. I, I would have to agree. If a three fifty were sitting right, if that was a three fifty over there. I would probably buy this. But the transmissions, I don't know what I would do. You have two options. 10 or 80 or the TR. Uh, you'll, get, you'll actually get a Tremec. Yes. 3160. 3160 out yep. of the GT350, correct. So you have two options with the Mach 1, which you didn't with the Bullet. So right. the Mach 1 gives you a 10-speed automatic. Right. Or you can do the six-speed manual, but a Tremec. Yep. So. And 480 horsepower, it's yep. got the Bullet intake manifold. 
So about 20 more horsepower so, there. So all of the whole Toffin is going to be just like the bullet was set up. Yep. So from your intake manifold, throttle body, air box, that's all from the GT350. I would have liked to have seen 500 horsepower, but I mean, it's close enough, I guess, you know. I wouldn't do anything until the warranty's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I tend to avoid them pretty quickly. Uh, yes. That's why I said it. <laughs> yeah, I know. So guys, come check out Sean Allen, Jenkins and Wynn Ford, right there in Clarksville, Tennessee. Come check this thing out, $60,000. It could be yours, 10 or 80. Got the good seats in it with the heat heated and cooled option i am in love with this thing i didn't think that i would be i admit that i was completely wrong and again if there's a 350 sitting right here i might have to just buy this so let me know in the comments what you think yeah fact factory diff cooler so he's pointing out yeah now you see it yeah so that's opened up can so we it, see it with it's the, truly functional yeah no I, I love it can i see it with the hood down yeah all right Oh, uh, you don't have to close it all the way. I just want to get the the idea. Well, it's, I'll just do it anyway. Okay. Now you can see the line. Yeah, yeah, we can get the angles. This is fire. So Here's the Mach spoiler. 1. Everything is black or magnetic. Yeah, your rear black spoiler magnetic. is also magnetic. Uh, yeah, I saw that too, yeah. So. And, and it's a different design. There's my thumbnail. Right there. 